The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to start it real quick in about two minutes. Can you hear me, Derek? Thank y'all for signing on right now. Thank you for coming in soon. Uh, Derek, can you hear me now? Or can you speak now? Mic check. Got you. I hear you. Yeah. Can you uh, can you see the presentation, Derek? Yeah, I can see it. All right, y'all. We're gonna give it one more minute for a couple more folks to hop on, and then we will get started. Thank you all again for uh, joining on time and being present.
All right, yeah, we're going to get started right now. Thank you all for joining our Youth and College Division uh, webinar series. Tonight is Kickstarting a Voter Turnout Campaign. Uh, my name is Wisdom Cole. I am the Youth and College or National Organizing Manager uh, for the Youth and College Division. And this is, I believe, the fourth webinar in our webinar series. Um, about uh, two, three weeks ago, we started off with our national webinar where we announced our campaign to level up the NAACP. And so we've been going region by region, working on kickstarting a voter turnout campaign. After we finish kickstarting a voter turn turnout campaign, we're gonna talk about effective messaging later on um, this month. But uh, tonight what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some greetings from our region six leaders. We will also be talking about uh, how to start off a voter registration campaign. Then I have uh, Derek Lewis from Texas, who's also going to talk about base building and a voter countdown calendar. And after that, we should have some field examples in terms of what people are doing in the field. Uh, there'll be about 10 minutes for Q&A. So in the bottom, um, if you're on the web application, you should be able to put a question in, in terms of anything that you are seeing on the presentation, any questions that you have about what's going on in the field or going on in your campus, feel free to drop that question below. Um, and we will answer it at the end. Uh, also, there are five handouts that are available on this webinar. There is one on class wraps, one on tabling, one on uh, phone banking, and there is the agenda as well. Um, you can check those handouts out and feel free to download those, send those to your people, send those to your e-boards, send those to your students uh, to support in terms of how to put on a uh, voter turnout campaign. All right, so what we are going to do, we're going to start off with some greetings from our Region 6 leaders. And so first off, I'm going to have, because uh, I see on my staff list, I'm going to have Eric Kane. Can you hear me, Wisdom? I can hear you, Erica. All right. I uh, just want to say welcome to everyone um, from the mighty Region 6, the best region in the nation um hopefully all of you guys were able to get on and you have actually started some of these things that wisdom is going to talk about today um i think everyone should have my contact information if not i'll make sure we get it out to everyone but i just want to again say thank you guys for getting on the call thank you so much erica um after the after erica i'm gonna have Traylon speak i'm gonna call up real quick Hey, Traylon. Hey, my own. Hey, I'm going to put you on right now. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, guys. This is Traylon Rogers. I, uh, I'm going to make it quick. My phone is dying. I'm walking to my room. But um, I just want to say hi. Uh, we have a lot of good things going on. I'll send an email out later this week about the stuff that's getting ready to happen in Region 6. Uh, the National Youth Work Committee is working uh, hard um, so that we can create some new things and, and reactivate some of the youth councils and uh, junior youth council and college chapters around the uh, country, but um, uh, Kevin, Miss Eric, and I are working really hard to make sure that Region 6 uh, comes out on top in every initiative that we create and everything that we start. Uh, I'll send an email more in depth. Uh, we're starting our task force. This uh, We started our task force last month uh, looking for issues that uh, have been brought up by uh, youth in the field who actually do the work every day. And um, if you have any concerns uh, or comments, please feel free. Uh, to reach out to any of the national staff, and they'll send it to uh, your rep representatives on the Youth Work Committee. But again, I'll send an email out later this week about some of the things that are happening and some of the ways you can get involved. Thank you. Thank you so much, Traylon. I appreciate it. Um, I also want to introduce our national board member from Region 6, Tevin Ellis. Um, unfortunately, he was not able to be on the call tonight. Uh, but there's a picture. Definitely, he's somebody who is uh, very involved in what's happening in Region 6. And so if you're looking to our leaders to, for support, uh, Traylon, Erica, and Tevin are on top of the ball for Region 6. So thank you all so much for being on tonight. I appreciate it. Um, so next, I'd like to introduce uh, Derek Lewis, and I actually will let him introduce himself. But really quickly, about two weeks ago in Cincinnati, Ohio, we had an electoral boot camp called Train the Trainer where we trained uh, 20 young leaders from across the country, from voter registration to voter mobilization and all the steps in between. And um, he's gonna speak a little bit about himself and the work he's gonna be doing. Hello, can you hear me, Wisdom? Yep, I can hear you, Derek. 
Okay, cool. What's up, Region 6? Um, like you said, my name is Derek Lewis. Um, I'm out of Austin, Texas, and like I said, I'm a trainer for, for the organization focusing on the youth and college division. So um, real quick, um, I am hosting trainings, um, looking to host trainings in between, um, really just in Texas, on how, how, how we can organize better for this um, upcoming election. If guys looking at um, voter ID and, and the registration laws, uh, relationship building, messaging, different tactics, and also um, just organizing the calendar, which, which we'll talk about later on in the presentation. So I'm here to help. Um, I'd also, I don't mind giving out my email. I can give that out later at the end of the presentation. So if you guys have any questions or um, any more questions about what, what the presentations can be about or how I can better assist your all's unit, um, you can definitely just contact me. Thank you so much, Derek, and I appreciate that. Uh, so along with Derek, there are 19 other trainers from around the country who are available to do trainings. Um, their contact information and um, skills will be posted later. But uh, when you're thinking about how can I have more engagement on the ground, how can I have more students trained or engaged in terms of the civic process, definitely this is a resource for y'all to tap into and to be able to uh, connect with. Again, they didn't go through any easy training. It was a rigorous four days, as Derek can attest to, where we were working from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. And so these are highly skilled students who are able to support your staff and have already uh, gotten started in the field. And so um, I'm very appreciative to have them as well. So really quickly, uh, just a reminder of our 2018 goals for our Level Up NAACP campaign. Number one, we want to increase voter registration for 18 to 25 year olds. Uh, number two, we want to begin to base build, which uh, Derek will be talking about later, to shift relationships of power. And number three, we want to educate and turn out all people of color in our community. So when we're thinking about our voter turnout campaign, we want to start to think about these goals and how are we achieving them um, in our communities, at our schools. So uh, today we'll be focusing mainly on number one and number two. So really quickly, I want to remind you, we have 58 days until the 2018 midterm election on November 6, 2018. 58 days. So we should be hitting the ground running. I'm seeing a lot of voter turnout, a lot of voter registration stuff starting in the field, which I really, really appreciate. And I'm glad that folks are uh, getting started with that. Again, I want to continue to urge people to, to be active, to, to reach out, to get uh, support as well. Um, if you were on our very first call, we talked about our vote box, right, which we are getting ready to launch. And if you have 500 uh, uh, new newly voter uh, new voter registrations, um, we will send you a vote box, which includes T-shirts, um, pens, pencils, stickers, uh, voter registration cards, pledge cards, all that good stuff to help support you in your in your campaign. So um, we'll talk a little bit about that more later, but definitely continue to be active, continue to be working and I appreciate what I'm seeing so far. So voter registration tools. So uh, the basics of voter registration when you're thinking about that is how do we put on a good canvas? How do we start canvassing? And what canvassing means essentially is we wanna be in a high traffic area where there are a lot of people who are available to have conversations, right? So when you think about why do we canvass, right? It's to connect with infrequent voters. So people who don't tend to show up to the polls to get voters who are already planning to vote to pledge to vote so we can begin to do voter contact so we can let them know where their polling place is, let them know if we have any events where they can get more information about what's on the ballot. And then last but not least, we do canvassing to recruit volunteers, right? Again, in the organization, we say membership is power, right? So building membership equals building power. And so the more members we have, the more volunteers we have, uh, the more power we have in our organization to do the work that we are here to do. So uh, I'm gonna go over a couple canvassing tools. And like I said, again, uh, below in the handout box, uh, you should be able to find handouts for this that you can use with your e-board, with your students, with your volunteers. Uh, but the first tool I wanna go over is tabling, right? So tabling is a classic canvassing tool uh, used in high traffic areas, uh, such as the dining hall, uh, such as any uh, central location, such as like a quarry or a plaza, um, even it could be happening at, at a football game, any kind of event where there's a lot of people, um, tabling is definitely something really great that you can use. And so uh, some things I want to remind you when you're tabling is one, to be prepared. Do you have your materials? Do you have your signs? Do you have um, your voter registration card? Do you have your pledge cards? Uh, number two, I want to make sure that you are legitimizing yourself, right? Talking, you know, I'm, I'm with the NAACP Youth and College Division at Bloomsburg University. Right. Where are you from? 
Uh, you want to listen to your people, right? So as people are coming to your table, you're listening to them, but you're also agitating them, right? You're also asking them questions about uh, what's going on in today's political climate, and you're urging them to register to vote because it is going to affect uh, them as students or as people in the community. And then last but not least, you want to get a commitment. Um, so making sure that you're getting people committed to registering to vote and um, having them sign a pledge card where they are putting their information, such as their email, their phone number, so you can you can stay in contact with them throughout the the voter registration phase into voter education, into voter mobilization. So you're consistently having contact with them. Um, a couple tips is making sure that you don't just sit around behind the table, but also but stand up. You know, use the table to uh, draw people's attention into. You know, you want to make it beautiful, make it colorful, have fun with it, right? Um, this is also an opportunity to gain membership, right? So people don't know about the NAACP on your campus or events that are happening, use the table to draw attention, engage with the community. And I'd also advise to create a script. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but create a script that your volunteers can use, right? So especially for newer volunteers who haven't done this before or who might be nervous or shy, how can they use a script to uh, continue to talk with people who they may not know, they may not know, or are they just getting in contact with for the first time? So a quick uh, little script that you can go over, right, is you know the first question you're talking to them, you're introducing yourself, and then you're asking them, "Are you registered to vote?" If they say no, register them. If they say yes, but not at my current address, you want to re-register them. If they say yes, but they're like, "I haven't received any confirmation, I haven't received any information, um, I haven't gotten an email." Um, you want to re-register them. And then if they say yes, that they are all good, you want to get them to do a voter pledge, right? So in addition to registering them, you want them to pledge to vote. But if they're like, yep, I'm good, I'm already good to go, I know what's up, you want to have them do a voter pledge so that you can have their information so you can continually contact them um, along your voter turnout campaign to provide them with information as well as inv invite them out to events that you're having on your campus. And so this is a basic script and we'll, me and Derek are going to actually run through this a little bit later in terms of a, a demo, but uh, this is somewhere to start in terms of designing your script. The next tool is class wraps and I really want to echo that class wraps are actually one of the quintessential tools in terms of canvassing, right? These are actually very essential in terms of making sure that people turn out to vote, that people turn out for your events. Uh, this is a, a short presentation that you give to a classroom of students or at a local community meeting. And so think about, you know, who are professors or teachers or people that you have a good relationship with? What are maybe spaces or uh, other clubs that you have good relationship with that you can go in and, and give just a quick announcement about what's going on? So, you know, step one, you want to get permission from um, the person's space that you're entering, right? Can I, can I come in really quickly for about five minutes and uh, talk a little bit about what we're doing with the NAACP um, in terms of getting people to register to vote, as well as our voter turnout campaign. Um, after that, you wanna be strategic, right? Think about what are places or what are spaces where people who are infrequent voters may be out. What are classes, right? Are there um, ethnic studies classes there at your campuses? Are there African-American studies classes at your campus? Even classes that are maybe not necessarily geared towards voting, right? You know, I was a science major in college, but I think it was really important for me to think about how to get engaged in the civic process as well. And so thinking about places where maybe people who are not always exposed to this kind of messaging um, are able to get this uh, this messaging across. You wanna get your point across quickly. So usually, you know, they have a class or there's a meeting going on. And so you might have two to five minutes to get people engaged in terms of what you're talking about. And so uh, really think about, you know, your script, think about what you're gonna say in that two to five minutes to get people excited, engaged. You wanna be fun, you wanna be loving, you wanna make sure that you are, are getting people excited about voting, right? So making sure you're having people there who can get that point across quickly. Last but not least, you want to get context and commitment. So have a, uh, a notebook, have a, a pencil and a pen, have some kind of sign-in sheet where you're, you're getting people's context and getting commitments, right? So you could have, you could pass out voter pledge cards. You can um, just do a sign-in sheet so that afterwards you can make sure that you're staying in contact with those people to let them know about what's coming up later, right? Um, and again, I said this is definitely one of the most effective and productive ways to do voter registration. Uh, next, door knocking, right? So door knocking is one of the basics of, uh, of canvassing, right? So going door to door and asking folks um, if they're registered to vote and if they are registered to vote to pledge to vote, right? So there are two types of door knocking. There's, tar there's targeted door knocking and there's blind door knocking, right? Targeted door knocking is knowing exactly where you're going to go, right? What list of people, who are the people you're going to be contacting, who the people 
you are going to be uh, knocking on doors with. And so maybe there is an African American themed dorm on your campus, or there is a people of color dorm on your campus, or there's like a themed dorm that you're trying to hit specifically, and you know that there's a certain amount of people in that dorm who may be unregistered to vote, that's a targeted knock. So you know exactly who you're gonna be contacting and who you're gonna be working with. A blind knock is essentially what it sounds like, right? You're going from door to door to um, any people on campus that you um, that you have access to, to knock on doors, right? And so you wanna think about your campus and what is gonna be best for your campus um, or your community group, right? I know some people are in youth council, some people are under 18. And so uh, this also works in community groups thinking about, okay, what neighborhoods are you going to be targeting and what neighborhoods are you going to be talking to or are you going to every single neighborhood, right? You also want to think about your time and what is most uh, effective for the time and volunteers that you have to support you. Um, I know in college, oftentimes we do uh, something called dorm storming where we, we would go to all the dorms, right? And we would have a set amount of people who would actually have walking lists, meaning that they know what floors and what rooms that they're going to be um, targeting and talking to and um, actually just going through each of the dorms, knocking on people's doors, talking to them about registering to vote, talking to them about pledging to vote um, in residence halls and apartments and community centers, right? So um, knowing exactly what people are going to be doing. Um, and then last but not least, I want to talk to you all about setting goals, right? So if one person uh, goes and does door knocking for about an hour, they should be able to reach at least 30 doors and register about five people to vote, right? So if you if you think about this in terms of uh, mathematics, right, um, if you are getting people, if you're doing about an hour a day, right, Monday through Friday, that's five hours, right, you should be able to register about 25 people to vote, right? You should be able to hit um, 30 doors each day, right? And so that's a really great goal to set and making sure you're reaching that goal and measuring that goal. Last but not least, I want to talk to you about phone banking, right? So phone banking is no, another critical part to a voter turnout campaign. How do we make sure that we are databasing the people that we are contacting and making sure that we are following up with them? So me and Derek are actually going to run a little simulation of what phone banking looks like. So um, Derek, you there? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Hello, is Derek home? Yeah, this is Jim speaking. Hi, this is Wisdom Cole Khan from the NAACP Youth and College Division of Houston Tilton University. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, and yourself? I'm doing well. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about the midterm elections that are very important to students. The outcomes of the election will decide whether where millions of dollars spent for education, as well as the programs students care about. We are contacting students like yourself to see if you are registered to vote. So I'm going to pause there right there. And so Again, we're gonna go back to our script, right? So you're asking somebody if they are registered to vote and if they say no, right? So since you're on the phone with them, you wanna indicate what are some upcoming events that you're having or locations where they can go and register to vote, right? Uh, if they say yes, but don't have the current address, you wanna urge them to re-register. Like, hey, you need to go and re-register because we wanna make sure you're registered at the current address that you have. Again, if they say yes, but no confirmation, you wanna re-register them to vote. And then if they say yes, they're all good, um, uh, something that we've started here at the Youth and College Division is that there is a voter pledge. So people can text NAACPYC to 40649 and pledge to vote, right? So this is a really good way to, to connect to the national database, but maybe you want to make sure that you're getting information on your campus. And so maybe you do a Google form. Maybe there is a quick texting that they can do, or they can text somebody, or there's a link you can send them so they can you can get their information down. Um, you can either update their information on the phone call as well, but you want to be getting that information down so you can later on do voter contact. Uh, so thank you, Derek, for that for help with that simulation. Again, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to drop questions down below in the question box. Um, at the last 10 minutes of our webinar, we will be doing a Q&A session. Uh, so last but not least, you, uh, I talked about a walk list, but I also talked about goal setting, right? So right here on the screen, what you see is this is a great way to to track your goals, right? So thinking about uh, your your canvas and thinking about what are the tools you're going to be doing, right? So if you're going to be tabling, if you're going to be doing class wraps, if you're going to be doing door knocking, right? If you're registering people to vote, pledging people to getting people to pledge to vote, how are you tracking uh, these goals that you have set for yourself, right? So making sure that you know what your people are doing and making sure that you know how many of each they're doing and so that you can um, really reach your goal and actually vigorously uh, target and attack what you were trying to do for your, your voter turnout campaign on your campus or your community center. 
So next I want to talk about putting on a voter registration drive. So usually when I think about putting on a voter registration drive, I try to think about it uh, two to three weeks in advance. And so I know we're, we're, we're really at the cusp right now where people are hitting the ground and really working on their voter registration drives. Uh, but if you haven't put your voter registration drive, you want to think two weeks in advance, right? So today is uh, September 9th, right? And so you're thinking uh, if today is September 9th, if I'm putting on a voter registration drive September, let's say September 24th, or even better, September 25th, which is National Voter Registration Day, um, you want to think two weeks in advance and make sure you have a place, a date, and a time for your registration event. So you want to start getting um, ready for, for that. You want to connect with any event organizers for permission, right? So maybe there's a football game. Maybe there is um, some cookout that's happening on your campus. Maybe uh, there is just general tabling happening, happening in the, the quarry or central plaza on your campus or some kind of community center that's um, in your area. You want to get permission two weeks ahead in advance from those people who actually like own that space or control that space so you can make sure that you're within um, your, your rights to be able to do that. Um, right. Maybe they have some kind of uh, noise violation or ordinance where you can't blast music or something at a certain time. You want to make sure all those ducks are, are set in the line so that you're not, you don't have any trouble when you're putting on your event. Next, you want to build your team leadership. And Derek will actually talk about that later on when we talk about base building. But make sure you have a strong team who can lead your volunteers or lead your people when you're doing this voter registration drive. You want to get your voter registration forms. Uh, so uh, a lot of times I get um, emails or DMs asking me, where do I get voter registration forms from, right? And so really quickly, um, these are available online, right? You can download them. Um, one second. You can download them online and you can look at your local boards of elections or county office or library, or you can even go to the DMV or the U.S. Post Office to see um, if they have voter registration forms and get those from your um, local board of elections. And so these are places where you can get them. There are some universal ones, but you also want to make sure if there's one specifically for your county or for your state. Uh, next, you want to get supplies, right? Make sure you have your clipboard, your pens, your tables, um, your stickers, your buttons, your T-shirts, right? All that good stuff needed to put on your voter registration drive. Uh, again, like I said earlier, right? If you get 500 newly registered voters, we will send you a youth and college vote box, right? So that's going to include these clipboards, these stickers, these uh, official NAACP T-shirts at no cost to you. So making sure that you are on that, and as soon as you get 500, Come contact us, talk to us. You can email us at youthincollege at naacpnet.org, and we will send you an agreement, and we will send you that vote box. Uh, number six, you want to you want to publicize your event. So, you know, you want to start making sure you're getting your flyers together. You're posting it on your all your social medias. You're posting it on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, maybe you're going around campus and you're posting flyers. Again, you can tangent this with uh, doing class wraps, so you're letting people know when your event is. Um, and then after that, you're training your volunteers, which Derek will talk about as well a little bit more in detail. When you are executing your event, you're getting people to register and you're getting them to pledge, right? Simple as that. Reg and pledge, reg and pledge, right? So are you registered to vote? If you're registered to vote, dope. Can you pledge to vote? Dope. If they are not registered to vote, you're registering them to vote and you're getting them to pledge to vote. So you can database, database, database. So you have their information. You can database your information. Maybe you're having like a digital download Friday where you are putting all the information that you have into some kind of Google Doc or some kind of system so you can actually have a measured voter contact campaign where you're talking to your voters and making sure that they know um, what is up and what's coming up. So uh, really quickly before I finish up on my part, uh, I just want to reiterate, you know, the use of tabling, class wraps, door knocking. Another great tool is building coalitions, right? So if there's organizations that are doing similar work to you, who that you know that you can partner with, you want to begin to build coalition with them so that you can um, start to make the work easier for yourself. So maybe you're dividing up the work. Maybe a certain group is taking on a certain amount of the work and you're taking another certain amount of the work. Building coalitions is a really great way to uh, divide up the labor. And also build membership, all right? Maybe there's people who want to also be part of your organization, but are part of another organization, and so they can see where the work intersects with one another. Um, again, like I said before, phone banking, you want to be sending emails out, text messages, right? I told you about the text messaging services that we have as, at the NAACP. Uh, you want to be making leaflets and brochures that you can hand out to people. And again, you know, I want to urge the, the use of social media. I'm seeing a lot of beautiful social media pages um, on our Instagram. 
And so continue to, to post, continue to come up with interesting events, right? Um, some of the events I've been seeing all across the country, you know, in Florida, they do souls to the polls. Um, in Virginia, they have uh, who's invited to the cookout where all they're doing voter registration as well as having a barbecue. Um, in Georgia, I see them having a mass incarceration and drug wars town hall where they're talking about issues that are affecting our community, but also working on getting people registered to vote. Um, if folks haven't started school yet, um, especially when they have move-in days, uh, freshmen and transfer students are really great target people to get to register to vote and making sure that they are in the know about what's happening on your campus. Maybe you're having an NAACP interest meeting. I'm seeing a lot of people getting started on building the membership. This is also a great way to also do voter registration and making sure that people who are new to your organization um, knows what's up and actually are involved, right? Uh, football games, right? Uh, I actually was out in Ohio this past weekend for the Ohio State Convention. And um, I know in Cleveland, uh, there are basketball games where people are in attendance. You know, they have a great, a great game. They have a lot of people turn out. And that's another great area or space and time for people to do uh, voter registration and make an announcement about uh, different events that are happening where people can show up and show out. Uh, last but not least, if you're having mock debates, right, having people come up and talk about the issues that are happening for the upcoming election, um, that's a really good way to get people interested and engaged, right? That's kind of part of our voter education plan. And then uh, last but not least, pledge and party, right? You know, a lot of the folks are on, on college campuses, and this is a really great way to, to get people to engage, right? Pledge to vote. We're having a party on Friday. You can come um, to, to the party, right? Your ticket to the party is your, your pledge. So some of you might be thinking, Wisdom, how do I do this, right? You're asking me to do a lot of different things, a lot of different um, parts of this voter registration campaign, but how do I do this? And so I'm actually gonna turn it over to Derek Lewis to talk to you a little bit about how we base build in the NAACP. All right, I uh, appreciate your wisdom. So base building uh, is very simple. We're talking about recruiting, um, identifying, cultivating, and developing our leaders. So when we're talking about that, I know that there's an old proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go along. If you want to go far, go together. So there's definitely strength and numbers within the organization. So um, going along to the next slide, um, we were talking about recruitment and, and also identify who we are. You've got to treat this um, as serious as possible. You don't want just, you know, just anybody coming into it. I like you, you like, there's this old saying, but you don't want to bring just anybody back, back home. So you got to kind of like take this work, should take this work as, as similar as that. Um, recruiting, finding different people who don't just look like you, finding people who also identify with you and, and also identify with the people that surround you within the organization. Also, once you get this person, you're going to also have like to build on this relationship. So have that, have, have those one-on-one -on -one conversations, have those meetings, make it more personal, make the person feel like they are welcome and that, and, and that, and that whatever whatever this person can provide, that it can also be a commitment to them moving forward. And um, when you're talking about this whole relationship building, let's make sure that this person is also educated as well, um, making sure that our beliefs are the same, and also and, make, and also making sure that, that the person's um, ideals and um, talk, making sure that, that the person's ideals and um, and thoughts also align with the organizations and our strategies and also we're, we're, we're trying to advocate for a change for it. And then after that, you also got to keep them engaged, empower them. So we want that, like, give give the person tasks, give them, give them responsibilities, um, make them work. That's what they're here for. Everybody has, everybody has a job, everybody has a role. So make them work, but make sure that it's something that is, um, something that, that isn't too large for them to where they feel overwhelmed. So now we're going to talk about um, recruiting and training our volunteers. So this is very, very key and very, very important. Um, most of you guys should already be doing this already. But um, just to break it down with the visual, we have a chart right here. So the first thing that I want to look at is the head. So we're looking at the head, we're looking at the issues, um, the issues and the things that people care about. So you see right here we have our King Jones. He's a sophomore student, lives on campus, and he's also his major is in graphic design. So when we're talking now, we have this conversation. He said that the three issues that matter to him are police, are police brutality, Black Lives Matter matter to him, and justice. 
So going down from the from the head to the heart. So we went from the issues, and now we're going to the heart. It's, what, it's like, what does this person value? So this person values the love of his community, black pride, and dedication. So we're going from the issues to the values. Now let's get to what can this person contribute? What can this person offer to the organization so we can move forward? So now what, what Mr. Jones has to offer is he's, he has great communication skills. He's also good with marketing and tech and also, like, you know, like, and also with, with the networks. So with somebody like that, I mean, it's perfect just off what, just off what, just off what um, Mr. Hakeem can contribute. I feel like that's somebody that I can maneuver into person pub or to something to where like they can work a little bit behind the scenes and also be a part of the membership committee with, with, with the person's communication skills. So going from the head, the heart, the hand to what the person can contribute um, to his interests. So the tummy, so like, what is this, like, what is this state at this person? What is the state that this person has a, uh, an issue about um, or something about with, with relationships, anything in that nature? So this person interests himself, people of color, family, and friends. So now you add the issues, you add the values, the interest and the contributions, and now we need to get to the capacity so we can get to the commitment. So based off this person, like I said, it's a full-time student. This person has this person has a life as well. And I think that sometimes we get mixed up with, okay, like this is the organization. I care for it. This is my heart. I can do this every day, all day. But also, we need to, we also need to um, think about that when we're talking about our, our volunteers and, and who we have. This person is a full-time student and also has a work-study job. This person may not be very good at just, you know, like multitasking pretty well. Obviously, it looks like that the person isn't involved too much. So when it comes down to that, like I said, you want to make sure that you give, your, you make sure you want to give your volunteers um, little little biteable tasks that biteable tasks, excuse me, that uh, I'll also talk about later on um, in the presentation. But with all this, you have the issues, you have the values, you know, um, your contributions, the interest, and the capacity. Now, based off the of, now based off the person's capacity and value, will show me how much this person can commit. And this is how you start to build the relationship. This is how you started, but that's not where you ended it. So to still move forward, um, you need to build on things that the person's already good at. It doesn't make any sense for you to get a volunteer, get somebody new, and not and not use them for anything that they're not good at. Use everybody's strengths to them. Use everybody's strengths. Also, um, um, number two, we're talking about assigning vital tasks that are measurable. So if you have a volunteer, they come out one time, let's say that we're going we're out um we're out on the highway or out at the library or somewhere on campus and we're just trying to get people to register results. Right off the bat, I don't want to put this person out in the front to go chase down people, track them down just to see if they registered to vote. This is somebody that you can use in a small area to where um to where to where they're just organized the forms for people to go back and forth or just working behind the table doing doing whatever tasks need to be done. To make sure that to make, to make sure that that the drive is being done effectively. Also, be clear. Please be clear. Be clear about your timelines, your expectations, and how you want to hold this person accountable. With the reason being is because when it comes down to training and tracking our volunteers, we just really have to make sure that we are just clear about what we are expecting from this person. Because if I am if if, if I am a volunteer and you come to me. And you're saying, yeah, I, I just need you for this one thing. This one event, the only thing I need you to do is pass out papers, something very simple. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I can do that. So when you go from there to the person just completed the task, and now it's okay now. Can you do this? Or can you do this? Somebody didn't show up, so now can you do this, 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 and that? And now, from the outside looking in, that makes, that makes me feel like that you are unorganized, that you don't know what is actually coming into play. So do that on, you also have to do that for your sake and also for the volunteer sake so they can understand and have a better expectation of what to, uh, of what to come moving forward. And also um, prove to them that, you know, that they can handle that. And in a long time, as you see them achieving and doing well on these small things, then that's when you can increase the level of responsibility for this person. So, um, 
going back to our last slide, you, you, you don't have to change the slide. We basically said that we came down, we came down to the to the common interest that Black Lives Matter. We got that, but also, like I said, the volunteer matters. So the relationship matters, the individual matters, the structure matters. And then also, when we're talking about the relationship, you, you need to get to know them. You need to understand why they volunteer. Um, understand the talent, and also honor the honor. Um, also honor diversity. When we're talking about the structure, like I said, you got to have a firm act, have clear expect, have clear ex expectations, and give them responsible, give them responsibility and accountability. And also at the end, like the most important thing that you must do is thank them. You have to, you have to thank them. You can't just say, okay, I need you for this, 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 this event, just for the numbers. So da, da, da. make sure that you praise them and that you thank them. Like so, uh, we can go back to the back to the next slide. I mean, the previous slide before this one. So, um, building a winning team. So, with the winning team, like I said, if you want to go fast, you can go alone. If you want to go far, go together. There is strength in numbers, and unity. We find our strength. This is why we've been around for 109 years. Is because we have a winning team, and our winning team, um, and throughout our winning team, it's just us as an organization. But to be effective in this election, you got to be organized because if you're not organized, then there will be a mess. Things will come out as you expect it to be. And you just got to be proactive in this election and also in, in, in the many more so we can be, so we can stay ahead of the ball. We got to stay ahead, y'all. So uh, when it comes down to, to, to your election campaign or whatever you have going on for, um, for, for, your, political, for your political action committee, um, these are the four key elements that I'm thinking of for a winning team. So you have got to have somebody that is a court a coordinator. So somebody who is uh, who is familiar with your community, somebody who can who can prepare and also distribute different tasks to your, to your team members. You got to have a, a recruitment co coordinator as well. So this person is especially responsible for, for reaching out, uh, confirming confirming that we do have a volunteer coming on this day and that day, make sure that we have sign ups. And make sure that we have managers. I mean, uh, make sure they have volunteers, volunteer sign-ins, so we can keep track of who's there and who's not there, who's been helping us along as we've been um, going through this cycle. Then you have your resource coordinator. So your resource coordinator is basically there to, you know, help and find to help and find um, places to where you can meet before and after. And then you have your trainer. Um, your trainer they can be experienced. Who can talk? Who, who can have a script that's written down, and also explain why is it important for you guys, for you, for, uh, for everybody to be voting, and explaining why it is important for us as as Black and Brown people in our community, especially in this new generation, why is it important for us to vote as well? Okay, so um, this practice, I'm just. So I'm gonna reiterate this because it's just so important. Uh, maintain, I mean, mentor and train your volunteers. Have that relationship with them and build that community with your volunteers. Make sure that your ass are firm. Please don't sugarcoat anything. Have clear expectations. Make time for your volunteers. I always say that you make time for what you want. If you definitely want to see change coming from the work that you've done, you gotta make time for what you want. So if that's making time for your volunteers, Making time just to make sure that everything is is um is organized beforehand. Take the time out to do so, and also share share that power. Share that power. Don't make it seem like you're always trying to like, you know, like dictate or be like the big person. There's like I said, there's strength in numbers, and also you have to be open minded. Whatever 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 that, whatever that that you have planned may not be perfect, and it may not be as effective if it's just you. Have have those meetings to where to where you have enemies and to and to also where like you're getting critiques, take in different ideas from the different members, no matter what position they hold. A position is nothing but a title. You can be a leader. I mean, you you can you can have that title that a title and not be a leader. The leader is is you doing the work and the act of. So please share the power, making sure that everybody has an input in this organization. And like I said, the um, to end it, you got to thank them, praise them, and celebrate them. So if you have a volunteer, you got you got about 10 volunteers that came out. That's probably the most that you had out the whole year. Just go ahead and give them a thank you. That can be something that, okay, like lunch is on us. We'll sign off in the volunteer hours. We can go ahead and have a pizza party, whatever, whatever that is 
or whatever you, whatever you can think of that can help um, just show your appreciation to your units. Like I said, volunteers are the major key. They are the major key to any success, any to any successful um, voter turnout campaign. So let's make sure that we keep that in mind. Can't just do it with your members. You also got to pull for different areas. All right. So um, now I'm going to be really brief um, on this voter on this voter count account. So if you don't have access to this, you have access to it now. Take a screenshot. Do whatever you got to do so you can um, so you can look at this. I think you want to send this out via email as well. So this is very um, this is a very nice tool that I found effective uh, when it comes down to organizing for for this election. So everything is kind of self-explanatory on the side. You have your legend to your right, and then you have your image to your left. So when you're doing this, you just want to break it down based off based off um, based off um, the election in, in your current city or in your current county, and what you guys have going on on your campus. So the pink re represents the your, your pink represents the electoral timeline. So your election day. Your um your voter registration day, last day for you, the last day for you to register, and early voting, and then you have your campaign timeline, which consists of the candidates. So we can when's the best time for a candidate to visit the campus? Uh, when is the major debates? When will there be a release of the, of the major voting guys? And then the green is just your your, your school timeline. So if you have any home any uh, homecomings, major school events coming up, you may have an org fair. Um, your hump days, TGIF Fridays, any type of events to where you can to, to where you can get more voters, and also just spread the word out more about voting. So with this calendar, um, this is something that we did. We were in um, Ohio for the training, and um, it's something that I actually took back home to my home unit, um, Houston Tillerson University, and I actually um, coached them up and trained them on how to use this. So um, starting off in August. This is kind of like where you have like a lot of school events coming out, um, especially when it comes down to your freshman. Well, let's, let's just disregard August. The past August goes straight into September. So when we're talking about um, September. We need to start contacting our people, contacting our voters. Um, if we have different school events going on, let's get that. This is also a good time for you to get your candidates to come to campus and for and also for your students to and also for your students to um, also interact with them. No, also as well, um, as Wisdom said earlier, this is um, September 25th, it's National Voters Registration Day. So if your unit doesn't have anything planned for that, or you just want to plan something around that, this is the day where um, I think, the, if I'm not mistaken, I think this will be half a half percent of people registered to vote on this day. Um, in October, this is where you have a mixture of all three. So you have different school events, um, you also have um, we also have like a different you have also have different debates going on, and then you have um, I know in Texas um, this is I think October 9th. I know this is the same across Texas, but I know in Travis County October 9th is the last day to register to vote. So this is kind of like your last time for you to like to do like your your final push on getting people to register. So let's making sure that we're doing our jobs in between September and October, doing doing everything when it comes to canvassing. Make sure that we get um, volunteers out there reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, making sure that we're getting people registered to vote. And then from October to November, you have your um you have your um your your debates, you have your forums, whatever, whatever um campus events that you have on campus. You can't really do any more registering now. Now you have to do more of informing and educating, making sure so, so like now your first goal was to make sure that we have um that we have students and people in our community registered to vote. Now let's make sure that our voters are educated. You can be you, you can be registered to vote, but you also gonna need to know where each person's platform is. So this would be a great time for you to push out these 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 um these these major voting guides, pushing out different information if, if that's on social media, but getting the word out. And also um GOTV. Geo GOTV, I don't have it on here, but just get out the get out the vote. And that usually happens the weekend before the election. And that's that three to four days to so where kind of like you're meeting people where they are. You want to get people out to vote, but you need to meet them where they are. If you've got somebody that 
because I like to turn up a lot, come up with something creative, come up with a, uh, whenever you come up with an Ohio, which is something that's going to be like a, a, a trekking boat. Be creative with your events. Make sure that you are getting people hyped up and motivated to vote because this election is so critical. I guess that what we haven't realized over the years is that the other party or the other people that they have been planning ahead of time. And what and, and what and what we've been doing as a people is kind of like settling in the moment. We have to get ahead of the eight bars I said early, and we have to make sure that whatever this vote right here now definitely will change the whole overall effect of how we see America as we see it now. So let's make sure that um, we stay organized. I would definitely recommend using this calendar if you can sit down with your unit. <laughs> if you can sit down with your unit, or if you can sit down. Um, with just um, your whole campus coming together with, with, with the different student orgs to come up with a voter count dial calendar to make sure that you guys are to make sure that you guys are as effective as possible. Thank you so much, Derek. I really appreciate that, and I think I want to echo the sentiments of the voter count dial calendar and how important it is uh, to stay to stay vigilant and to track the work that you're doing. Um, again, I just want to direct y'all again to this. Um, to this uh, Canvas goal setting, right? Making sure you're setting goals so that you're able to reach them. Uh, really quickly, actually, Tevin Ellis was able to join us on the line, so I'm going to put him on um, right now, and he's going to talk a little bit about um, the work that he's done and um, the work that's happening out in Texas. Go ahead, Tevin. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, rather, everybody. Um, so recently in San Antonio, these, our youth council just held an amazing back to school drive, um, partnered, partnering with George Hill of the San Antonio Spurs and the Indiana Pacers, um, came out. We were able to register over a hundred, uh, voters, a well, hundred individuals over the age of 18. And I believe we were able to also register a few people, uh, who were 17 who turned 18 right before the election. And, we had an amazing turnout. But before I speak about the rest of the event, uh, one piece of information that I like to kind of drive home to you is: don't limit your target audience to individuals that are, of course, only 18 years of age. It's important to reach out to individuals who are around the age of 17, uh, because those are a lot of also a lot of your first-time voters who think that they won't be able to vote until after they turn 18. But you can go ahead and register them now because that's, of course, that's step one into getting, into getting the process in motion. Um, outside of that piece of information I wanted to highlight, um, the event that we threw was an amazing event. It was one of five. So we have four more events coming up, all, re all voter registration jobs to kind of touch alongside where, uh, where Derek was leading, a little bit more fun and non-traditional. So right now, um, we're partnering with a lot of our DJs in San Antonio because our DJs in San Antonio have a pool and we're throwing together a, a voter registration drive at the skating rink to where you come to our front door and if you register to vote then you get inside the skating rink for free and can skate for free with your friends. So that's just the way we're trying to drive and increase those numbers. Of course, all part of the GOTV. Um, we have the sneaker summit coming up and also a poetry night. Um, so, of course, like Derek saying, guys, I just want to touch, be creative with your events because thinking outside of the norm is always going to generate traffic. And the more traffic you generate, the more uh, voters that we can get registered for this upcoming election, um, which is very important for the state right now. Uh, we had also had our past, we had, of course, like the NBA stars, we had barbers uh, team up with us to do free haircuts for back to school, uh, for the children who are going back to school. We also had our county judge, uh, Judge Wolf, come to the city and talk to, uh, he talked specifically to the youth, and uh, didn't, he kind of neglected the parents, which I thought was an amazing part because he got to directly engage with the millennials and, and tell them, and show them basically the importance of the stepping, of the stepping stones and what it takes to become a voter. Um, so that event was very successful, and I'd love to hear more success stories about jobs that we've had throughout the city. Um, but like I said, guys, September 25th is an important date for us. As what Derek said, pardon me, September 26th is coming up. Um, very, very important date. Uh, Wisdom has tons of information that we can all use in our branches, in our units, and with our youth councils. 
So for my college units, I challenge you all to get with the youth councils in your city because we have a lot of transitioning seniors that are going to college soon, maybe coming to your university. So it's good to go ahead and, and, and allow this to be the first introduction that they see the NAACP college unit doing work uh, on the grass on the grassroots level. But also because you're, of course, a mentor to them. So we want to, we want them to see more than just the Greek life or the sports or the party aspect of college, but that the NAACP, no matter what campus you're on, um, we're there for the community, not just for our campuses. Nice. Thank you so much, Tevin. Um, and I just I kind of echo those sentiments is that, you know, this work can be done on campuses, but it also can be done um, on the community level as well. Uh, so real quick, we're going to transition to, uh, I believe we have somebody from Langston University on to speak a little bit about the examples happening in Oklahoma. But right now, what I'm, what I'm getting them on the line, if you have a question, please feel free to drop it in the question um, section below, and we will begin to hopefully address those. I believe that we have Caleb Barnes on the line. Caleb, are you there? Can you hear me? I can. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am Caleb Barnes, the PR representative for uh, Langston University number Six seven five three, I believe. I'm a new member, but I'm still trying to do my best in order to see the vision that NAACP has and trying to get forward with it. Um, so recently, uh, last this uh, previous Saturday, we had our first uh, football game, and we had uh, set up a voter registration turnout uh, booth, but uh, it was raining, so due to weather conditions, we couldn't do it for long. But even with that, uh, we still uh, made an effort to uh, eva not evangelize, but uh, get people interested. Um, we continue to uh, have membership drives, uh, efforts around the uh, community and our university. Uh, we will host a, a candidate for representative in the region that covers Langston for an open, open discussion. And we've also been thinking of uh, having other chapters of NAACP uh, from like UCO, OSU, or uh, even um, OBU to uh, come and uh, uh, give their ideas on uh, what they think they uh, need to do. And then we can also like partner up in order to uh, get this, um, get the voter uh, registration turnout to be a, a bigger thing in all the uh, OKC uh, area. We've also, um, open up the chapter, uh, chapter to ideas so that they can help us uh, through uh, our student life. And uh, if there's anything else uh, that uh, I think um, can be implemented, uh, which we already kind of discussed already with the uh, uh, bullet points that y'all given me, uh, that would be most uh, helpful. Also, if it, is it possible that we'd be able to um, get uh, can I get a, a PowerPoint? I was, I was wondering if the, any of the other listeners would be able to uh, receive that PowerPoint because that would be kind of uh, great to go over in our next meeting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So shortly after this call, there will be an email that we sent to you um, asking just to fill out an evaluation form for it. Um, after right. the evaluation form is filled out uh, tomorrow morning, the PowerPoint will be uh, sent out to you. Um, so, uh, for everybody, definitely feel free to share this with your members, share this with your people, um, your next meeting, you know, to give them, uh, the best practices as well. Uh, like Derek said, Derek is also in Texas. And so uh, I would like, I'd, his information will also be shared as well. And if you'd like to contact him and see if he's available to do, uh, trainings as well, definitely reach out to him and tap into, uh, the community of trainers that we have. But thank you so much, Caleb, for being on. I appreciate, um, hearing the work that's happening uh -huh. in Oklahoma. Uh, real quick, we're, we're getting ready to wrap up this call, but if there's any questions, feel free to drop questions in the question box. Um, I see uh, another uh, trainer who's on the line, uh, my brother Jamel. He asked, Thank you again. He asked if, do you need permission for the school to register people to vote? So you only need permission 
um, from the school to put on an event usually, right? So you can put on a, reg a registration to vote event on your campus, but maybe your school has a certain um, rule or they have a certain, um, you have to maybe get permission from an advisor or certain things have to be signed um, documents, right? Maybe you wanna uh, play some music as well in your, um, in your area where you're having your event on campus. And so maybe there's like a some kind of a ordinance or something that you need to get signed or permission. You wanna to talk to whoever is in charge of the space um, so you can do the work efficiently without being stopped, right? Most def, most definitely. Um, are there any other questions? Um, again, the handouts from this um, webinar are also in this, uh, on the web application as well. So feel free to download those and share those with your people. How do you think, I have a question, Go ahead. if possible. Yeah. Um, how will we be able to um, inter, uh, like interconnect uh, the other universities around us in order to do this like in a bigger thing? I know that you've already given like the canvassing and stuff, but like, I don't think it would be kind of uh, helpful if we all canvass at the same time. You get what I'm saying? From like different schools, if we're at one different, well, at one particular uh, location, so how will we be able to do that um, if we do it like at different locations? We do the same thing because it would be like under the same, uh, under different uh, like logos, I guess, for like OSU, OBU, and also Langston. So how we be, could we do the same thing or can we mix it up or something? Um, I would say like, you know, just like Tevin said and, and Derek said, right, you want to mix it up and think, be creative with this, right? How do we, what this is a, a generation of uh, millennials where, um, we uh, do things differently. We um, have different tastes, right? And so there's like basic events like tabling. Everybody everybody can table. Everybody can, can do class wraps on the campus, right? But thinking about, uh, and I think what you're touching on, brother, is a coalition building, right? How can we build coalitions in our in our state with other universities and see uh, what is what are the best practices that are working on each university for the students, right? Each you know each campus maybe have has their own culture, has you know the own way they do stuff. Maybe people swag and surf in different ways. Making sure that you are getting uh, you're targeting your audience, and I think beginning to uh, build with those folks, right? So maybe you contact um, folks at the other universities, and maybe every once a week you're having like you know a, a phone call or a conference call where you're talking about the different events that you're having and what numbers you're getting and what are the best practices so that maybe there's something that they're doing on their campus that can support y'all, something that you're doing on your campus to support them. And then even better is like, how can you uh, collaborate with them to maybe have a collaborative event where they, where you are um, actually working together to, to bring both communities. And so if there's a nearby university, right, that's 30 minutes away or 20 minutes away or just down the road, how can you uh, maybe meet in the middle at a, at a basketball game or a football game or some kind of event, right? I really like what Tevin brought up in terms of the events that they're doing in the community. How can y'all come together and bring out the most amount of crowd, right? That's, that begins to build out your audience, if that answers your question. Okay, it most definitely did. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll, I'm going to go over it uh, again with my uh, other members, and we'll see what we can do from there. That was good. Um, my brother Derek Lewis, he had something to say as well. Uh, Derek? Derek, you there? I'm going to bring uh, Derek on the line real quick. Go ahead, Derek. Hello? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, <laughs> so I know I said that I was doing training um, in Texas, but, you know, like, the other states, y'all yeah, feel like y'all need some training and, you know, want to provide some funds, you know, I, I can definitely make that happen, you know. <laughs> Most of but um, if you guys like need any help with um, any voter registration event ideas, I can definitely help you all. I think I'm pretty creative in that aspect. So um, just something, just something you can have. Just utilize your resources when you have them. I appreciate it, brother. Right, so Derek is available um, for all of Region Six, right? And so if folks want to think about how they can um, bring them out. We can uh, brainstorm around that uh, to support y'all 
and making sure you have adequate training when people come out to train y'all. So thank y'all so much. Um, I got a question um, about partnering with other organizations on campus. We'd like to reach out to our local high schools. Who would be the best person to contact and when would be the best before, during, or after school? So if you are partnering with other organizations, right? Again, it's like thinking about what organizations have similar goals towards you, right? So organizations, right? I know folks, um, some people are part of Greek life. Um, some people are part of different dance troops. Some people are part of different like legal organizations, right? Uh, those are all really, really great people to connect with and to work with to to put this on, right? So again, like when you when you work with other people, right, you divide the labor, right? Uh, Derek, you know, he brought up this uh, this proverb or this understanding, right? Uh, something I like to think about is something called Ubuntu, which means I am because we are, which is a South African principle, which means I exist because we exist and we exist because I exist, right? Which essentially boils down that we can't do anything without the community. We can't do anything without members, right? So the more people we have, the more power we have, right? And if you're thinking about partnering with local high schools, um, I've actually been seeing some really good work happening in Baltimore where um, high school students are doing voter registration drives at their back to school nights. They're doing voter registration drives um, at different football games, um, at different uh, options that they have where parents and people who are over 18 can uh, work together. So I would say that if you are reaching out to local high schools, um, I would say look at, if you if you want to contact us at youth and college at naacpnet.org, we can try and work with you to connect with uh, local high schools in your area in region six. But I'd also say like reach out. There are like, there are high school, there are youth councils, there are high school units. Um, there are even like junior youth councils, right? That are um, in your area that you can connect with their advisor and talk with their advisor and then uh, work with them to uh, do voter registration drives either on their campus, on your campus, right? And um, I would reach out to them. You asked before, during, or after school. I might just say, you know, whatever best time is for you is like thinking about thinking about their schedule, right? It's best for them to be able to do do this work either after school or on weekends, right? But if there are events that they're having on their campus where you can be present on, definitely, you know, see if you can uh, connect with them on that. But hopefully that was really help, helpful for y'all. Um, I really, really encourage y'all partnering with high school students. We're really trying to get high school students involved in this process as well, because I know a lot of times they're often said, it's like, oh, I'm too young to vote, so I can't do nothing about it, right? Well, high school students are, you know, connected to their parents. They are connected to people in the community. They are connected to, to these things, and right? High school students are our future, you know, younger students are our future, and so how do we get them involved in this work as early as possible? Um, somebody asked if this webinar will be posted. So this, this webinar will be, um, the, either the PowerPoint will be sent out, Right now we're working with our civic engagement department to post all of our webinar series. And so all of our webinar series are being recorded and will be um, posted hopefully within the next week or two, but I'll keep y'all updated about that. But they are all recorded and so they will be available. We're just uh, working on hosting them on our NAACP.org site. Um, if there's any last questions, I'll take one more question before we wrap up tonight. I, again, I wanna thank y'all so much for being on this call and being here and being present. Um, I hope this was very helpful. Uh, I'm seeing all the likes and all the love for it. So I really, really appreciate it. Continue to post, continue to uh, do the good work that we are doing with NAACP. But real quick, if there are any last questions, feel free to drop your questions below. I'll take one more. All right, as I am not seeing any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to us at youthincollege at naacpnet.org. Also in the uh, survey that's gonna be sent out in about an hour from now, uh, if you had any questions that you didn't get addressed on this call, feel free to put those questions in that um, survey as well and we will get back to you within the next day or two. Um, I wanna thank Traylon, Erica, and Tevin for being on our call and being our Region 6 leaders. Definitely reach out to them and contact them because uh, they are here to support you and uh, make sure that Region 6 is doing that good work because Region 6, you know, y'all strong. I know y'all strong and I appreciate uh, the strength that y'all have been um, showing and what y'all been doing, the work that you've been putting out. Um, I also want to thank my brother Derek Lewis as well for, for being on the call and helping train again um, for being so supportive and also being just very ambitious and a strong leader in our community. We need folks like him. And if you are interested in be beginning to build up your leadership, I'd also tap into him and talk to him about how to build that leadership because he um, 
has built his leadership up to this level where, you know, he's being very respected in his community and he's being a, a beacon of hope for a lot of people. Um, I also want to thank uh, Caleb as well for being on this call and representing your university and speaking up on the work that y'all are doing. Um, we are having a webinar, a national webinar, next Sunday, uh, September 16th at 9 p.m. So national webinar, so that's everybody. Um, there was almost 50 people registered on this call. I think the highest amount of people I've seen on a regional call um, in the past few weeks. And so I really appreciate Region 6 for showing out. But again, I want to urge y'all to show out again next Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about how to craft an effective message. We're going to be having some of our um, trainers on that call teaching you how to craft an effective message, as well as hopefully our VP of Communications, also speaking about messaging a little bit as well. But again, show up, show out. We'll have we'll continue to have more resources for y'all. And thank y'all for being on this call again. Um, I hope to see y'all real soon. Hope to be in Region 6 real soon and continue to build with y'all. So have a great night and thank you so much.